Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. It was released in 1937 by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit, or There and Back Again. For years, it has captivated the imaginations of readers of all ages. It's the tale of Bilbo Baggins, a humble hobbit who prefers to stay at home. Gandalf, a wizard, shows up one day and changes everything. Bilbo is dragged along for the ride by Gandalf and his band of twelve dwarves. In order to recover a stolen treasure from a dragon, they're heading to the Lonely Mountain. Rivendell, the elven homeland, is where they meet the wise Elrond on their journey. There are goblins who kidnap the group of adventurers and take them around the mountain. Bilbo is separated from the dwarves and Gandalf after they escape the goblins. In the goblin caverns, he comes across Gollum and learns of his existence. In the box, he discovers an invisibility ring. Bilbo and his friends are almost abducted by goblins again when they reunite with the Wargs, a wolf-like creature that Bilbo encountered earlier. They are spared because of the intervention of others. The Wargs, a wolf-like beast, almost capture Bilbo and his companions again after Bilbo reunites with them. In the home of Bairn, a half-bear, half-man shapeshifter, they are rescued by eagles and allowed to rest and recover. Gandalf must join the wizards in their battle against a necromancer when they leave him behind in the gloomy forest of Mirkwood. Dwarves in Mirkwood are saved by Bilbo and freed from their incarceration by the Wood Elves. At the foot of Lonely Mountain, Bilbo Baggins and his band of dwarves arrive in Lake Town. Once they arrive to the castle, Bilbo discovers Smaug's weakness. When Smaug, enraged by Bilbo's words, attacks Lake Town, Bard, a tiny bird overhears Bilbo discussing this weakness and passes the information along to the town's top archer. Smaug's heart was without a protective scale, so Bard uses an arrow to shut it. As long as the dragon is dead, the dwarves will have free access to the riches. Thorin, the head dwarf, declined to provide financial assistance to the town's residents when they requested it for repairs. A condition in Bilbo's contract comes into play when it appears that Thorin will never change. Bard receives the Arkenstone, which Thorin holds in such high regard that it is worth more than any other item in the vault. To avoid the bargain, Thorin accepts the trade, trusting that Dane and his dwarves will arrive in time to stop it. While Dane arrives, the goblins and wargs decide to strike at the most inopportune moment. In order to defeat the dwarves, humans, and elves, all three groups band together. Baron and the eagles arrive just as the goblins and wargs appear to have the upper hand in the conflict. The eagles scare the goblins, but it was the bear that scared them away. Bilbo, who was knocked out cold by a boulder, now has to listen to Gandalf's account of the battle's conclusion. Bairn, a big bear, is the hero of the human, dwarf, and elf battles, transforming the outcome and securing a victory for the eagles. Thorin succumbs to his wounds and dies as a result. Dane, the dwarf army's leader, takes his place. He is now known as the Mountain's King. Now that Bard is in charge of Lake Town, the dwarves and humans may coexist in peace. Thorin succumbs to his wounds and dies as a result. Dane, the leader of the dwarf army, replaces him. He is now known as the Mountain's King. Dwarves and humans coexist peacefully in Lake Town under the leadership of Bard, the town's new master. After the Battle of the Five Armies is ended, Bilbo Baggins begins his long journey home. With the Margandolf and Bairn, whom they spend the winter with, resting and healing. Gandalf joins Bilbo on the rest of the journey back to his hilltop home, where he begins writing his memoirs, there and back again, A Hobbit's Holiday. They are called hobbits, and they're described in great detail by a narrator at the beginning of the story. They want to stay in and relax. All seven of them take their meal times extremely seriously, and they're all on time. It begins with a hearty breakfast and ends with a sumptuous dinner and dessert. Big hairy feet and pointed ears make hobbits a distinct species from dwarves in terms of size and appearance. Wearing bright colors and attending parties with gifts are two of their favorite pastimes. They choose a home with a garden and plenty of peace and quiet. It's clear that Bilbo Baggins has a special place in his heart for his abode. Despite its size, Bilbo's house is warm and inviting. It's tucked away in the Shire, nestled between the River Brandywine and the Downs. On the hill, he has a huge and well-appointed residence. He has a full house devoted to clothes, dining rooms, kitchens, and more. Before a wizard came to call, Bilbo was content in his own dwelling. Bilbo is sitting on his porch one nice afternoon when an elderly man walks up to him. So when Gandalf attempts to get Bilbo to join him on a journey, Bilbo says thanks, but no thanks. In spite of his mother being a took, a family noted for its adventurous lifestyle, Bilbo was much more like his father, 
of Baggins, who preferred to spend time at home. Nevertheless, he invites Gandalf to tea the following day. He thinks it's Gandalf when he hears a knock on his door the next day. Dwalin is, in fact, a diminutive dwarf. Dwalin quickly sits down at Bilbo's table and begins to eat after he has pushed past him. As Bilbo serves one dwarf, a second one comes in. He'll soon have a total of twelve dwarves at his disposal. Then Gandalf and Thorin appear, bringing his temper and patience to the breaking point. Thirteen dwarfs have been sent to clean out his pantry, along with the wizard. Bilbo's role as the thief on the dwarves' journey becomes clearer as the story progresses. Gandalf reveals an antique map with a mountain on it and an entrance in the mountain that he has found. Since Bilbo isn't keen on going on this trip, they have to explain its importance to him. When a dragon named Smaug attacked, his grandpa, Thorin, lost everything he had worked so hard for as king of the mountain. After killing the dwarves and scattering their treasure, the dragon has held on to it ever since. In order to regain the wealth, the dwarves have no idea how to deal with the dragon. When Bilbo first sees the map, he assumes that they want him to be the one to slay the dragon, but after taking a closer look, he changes his mind. In the end, he sets up the mattresses for all of his visitors while daydreaming about his upcoming journey. His dwelling is completely deserted the next morning when Bilbo wakes up late. He's glad, but he's also a little dissatisfied. Gandalf bursts in just as Bilbo is preparing to enjoy a leisurely breakfast. Awaiting his arrival are the dwarves, who have been patiently waiting for Bilbo's arrival. In the blink of an eye, Bilbo and thirteen dwarves find themselves trudging through the woods. When they see a campfire, they want Bilbo to work as a thief so they can afford to keep him around. Three enormous trolls are gathered around the fire, each devouring a piece of mutton. The trolls catch him as he tries to rob them of their money. Due to their voracious appetite, Bilbo is worried about being devoured by trolls. The trolls, on the other hand, are not very bright, so they begin arguing about how to best acquire information from Bilbo. In an attempt to find out what has happened to Bilbo, the dwarves hunt down the trolls and bag them up one by one. When they hear a voice in the woods, Bilbo is hiding and unsure of how to help his friends. In the minds of each troll, it is an insult to one of his pals. The trolls reignite their conflict. Now they'll fight till the sun rises. When the sun rises, trolls turn to stone. When Bilbo realizes the speaker in the woods is actually Gandalf, the dwarves are freed and they may continue their journey. However, they discover the troll's secret weapon hoard before they depart. As compensation for the dwarves' injuries, the party seizes these items from the trolls. It is the next day that the group sets out for Rivendell, a safe haven for elves. Rivendell can be found near the Misty Mountain foothills, just beyond the Wild's Edge. Elrond, the chief elf, greets them. If you're looking for someone who's noble and fair in face, strong, wisdomful, and venerable, look no farther than this guy. Bilbo had a soft spot for elves, despite the fact that he had never met any, because dwarves and elves are not naturally compatible. Dwarves, on the other hand, would be expected to behave impeccably as guests. To learn more about the trolls' new weaponry, Elrond must first learn to decipher their runic inscriptions and maps, who make the best weapons. A goblin killing weapon is one of these swords. The elves and the goblins fought over them. Elrond is also capable of deciphering the writing on the map. When the moon is in a given phase, the moon letters are visible. It explains how to go to the Lonely Mountain secret entrance. The next morning, the dwarves, hobbits, and wizards set out on their journey, well rested and raring to go. Gandalf and Elrond's guidance helps the party locate a path over Misty Mountain. Bilbo wakes up in the middle of the night to discover that their horses have vanished through a breach in the cave's wall while they were fast asleep. Goblins are stealing them from you. The goblins attack after hearing Bilbo's scream. The dwarves and Bilbo are quickly captured, but Gandalf escapes. When Thorin is going to convince the goblins to let them go, one of them points out that Thorin's sword is the greatest goblin-killing weapon ever. The great goblin, who is trying to consume Thorin, is enraged. There is a huge fire in the center of the chamber that starts shooting sparks at the goblins. Suddenly, all of the torches go out. The giant goblin is beheaded by a great sword in the midst of the chaos, and Bilbo and the dwarves are guided to safety by a mysterious voice. The intrepid explorers realize as they exit the cave that the voice they heard was indeed Gandalf. Bilbo is being carried by Dory, a dwarf, when they are captured by a goblin. Bilbo slips over and is struck unconscious. As soon as Bilbo regains consciousness, he realizes that he is trapped in a dark cave. Bilbo picks up the ring from the floor and puts it in his pocket. When all of a sudden, Bilbo finds himself on his own, 
he sets out to follow a path that appears to be familiar. He comes across a mysterious creature called Gollum in a highland lake. A slimy creature with large eyes and lengthy fingers. Using his huge feet, he softly rowed a small boat around the lake. Whenever he had the opportunity, he relished snatching goblins off the street and devouring their flesh. My Precious has always been his favorite nickname, but his name was given to him because of the sound it produced as he swallowed. Gollum is open to the idea of eating Bilbo, but he's not keen on the idea of eating the man's sword. It's Gollum who proposes a game of riddles, and it's up to Bilbo to stump him or it's him who will show Bilbo the cave's exit if they fail. Eventually, Bilbo asks him to guess what he has in his pocket after a series of riddles. It's impossible for Gollum to predict the solution, so he sets sail for his island to get his ring, which will make him completely invisible. The ring Bilbo holds in his pocket. This has enraged Gollum, who thinks Bilbo has taken his ring from him. For whatever reason, when Gandalf goes after Bilbo to murder him, Bilbo mistakenly puts the ring of power on his finger. Bilbo follows Gollum as he makes his way to the cave's entrance in search of Bilbo, even though he runs right by him. Bilbo sneaks by a group of goblins guarding the cave entrance while he is invisible, allowing them to escape into the open air. Incredibly, Bilbo emerges from the misty mountain on the other side. While the dwarves and Gandalf are debating whether or not to continue without him, he runs into them. It takes Bilbo by surprise when he realizes he has emerged from the misty mountain's shadow. While the dwarves and Gandalf are debating whether or not to continue without him, he stumbles across them. Bilbo shows up unexpectedly, but he keeps the ring a closely guarded secret. In Gandalf's opinion, the only thing keeping the goblins from following them is the sunshine. The adventurers will soon find themselves in a jungle at dusk, so they must act quickly. But the wargs stop them. Friendly wolfmen who are also goblins' allies. When the wargs come charging, the band tries to flee by scaling trees, but they're now stranded. Goblins enter, and things take a turn for the worst. Especially if the goblins set fire to the trees as a kind of attack. The Lord of the Eagles and his warriors arrive just as Gandalf is devising a strategy to escape with as many goblins as possible. Friends of Gandalf's and foes of the goblins are the two groups here. As the exhausted dwarves, wizards, and hobbits rest in their nests, the eagles fly them back to their homes. Following Gandalf's announcement that he will be departing, the company is led to the home of Baron. Baron is a half-man, half-bear hybrid who lives outside of Mirkwood in a massive wooden mansion in the middle of the woods. Because Baron is an enemy of the goblins, the story of their escape and the death of the great goblin is a favorite of his. His advice is to avoid the goblins and wharfs that are pursuing them on their intended route to the Lonely Mountain. He is aware of an alternate route through Mirkwood, the Elf Trail, which will bring them to the foot of the mountain. A warning from Bairn tells them to stay on the trail at all costs because the route is extremely perilous. It is at this point that he presents them with food and horses. The dwarves and Bilbo follow Gandalf in the opposite direction. Upon reaching the gate, the men are forced to let the ponies loose and continue their journey on foot. A frightening place, Mirkwood. They see a pair of eyeballs peering out from the darkness. They arrive at a lake soon after. In order to cross the water safely, they utilize a boat. However, Bomber, the dwarf, is sucked in and drifts into a day's long slumber. He must be carried by the dwarves. In their despair, they decide to investigate what they believe to be lights flickering in the trees, against the warnings of Gandalf and Bairn. After hearing elves singing and dancing in the distance, they hurry towards a nearby clearing only to discover that the elves are nowhere to be seen and that it is now pitch black. Once they've experienced this three times, they've gotten agitated and confused. Bilbo is soon unable to hear the voices any longer and is in too much of a state to continue. It's easy for him to doze off under a tree. After waking up, Bilbo is confronted by a spider that is attempting to link his legs together with a sticky thread. Bilbo slashes the spider to death with his sword. Sting is the name he gives to his weapon. They are drugged, cocooned, and hanging upside down from trees when he finds them. Bilbo slips his ring on and vanishes into thin air. To get the spiders out, he throws some stones at them. When all the spiders have been exterminated, he returns to free the dwarfs. When the spiders return, they're sluggish and unable to fend them off because of the poison they were injected with. Dwarfs and Bilbo realize they've taken refuge in a wood elf clearing, and the spiders aren't going to follow them there. Following their escape from the spiders, they come to a halt and realize that Thorin has vanished. The elves captured Thorin as he strayed into a clearing before the spider attack and became their prisoner. The wood elves are decent beings, but they harbor a great deal of mistrust towards others. As a result, 
The elves imprison Thorn for refusing to divulge their destination. The elves catch Bilbo and his companions after they have dealt with the spiders. Bilbo is able to follow the elves as they transport the dwarves to prison with Thorin because he is still invisible. Dwarves in their cells chat to him as he goes around the elves' home and helps plan an escape. He sees the elves trading with the residents of Lake Town by floating barrels down the river, and intends to put the dwarves in the barrels so that they can travel at high speed down the river. Bilbo jumps on one of the barrels and floats down the river, still undetectable. On reaching Lake Town, Thorin informs the master of Lake Town that he is a descendant of King Mountain and intends to reclaim Lake Town for himself. The people are ecstatic and eagerly await the return of gold to the economy. Hobbits and dwarves are back in the thick of things after a fortnight's rest and meals. They observe a dearth of flora as they move closer to Lonely Mountain. In the end, only Smaug's fire could put an end to it all. Because they can't enter by the main entrance, the group circles back to look for the hidden door marked on the map. Elrond has read them a riddle, but they have forgotten it when they arrive at the door. They are all discouraged after trying to pound on the door. While contemplating, Bilbo watches a thrush using its beak to knock against a stone, and this triggers a flashback of the riddle. After he brings them all together, the final rays of sunlight hit the door just right, and a keyhole appears in the door frame. Thorin opens the door with the key that came with the map. Thorin enlists the assistance of Bilbo Baggins to look into the break-in. Bilbo enters the dragon's lair with his ring on. Heavily armored, Smaug towers over his prey. He's a blazing red and gold creature with long claws and a flaming breath. Diamond Heart is the best way to describe his physique. In spite of his fear, Bilbo decides to bring a gold cup to the dwarves for them to see. Inconveniently, Smaug is outraged when he wakes up and discovers that the cup has been taken. Streams of fire erupt from his mouth as he soars above the mountaintop. He eats the dwarves and Bilbo's ponies as soon as he spots them. Bilbo returns to the dragon's lair later, this time under the impression that it is dormant. This is all a ruse by the dragon. Smaug is able to detect Bilbo's scent, but he is unable to see him. The two begin to talk. Smaug is amused by Bilbo's riddles and flattery, and as a result, he reveals his weak spot, a little area of skin lacking armor on his left breast. To inform Thorin what he's discovered, Bilbo rushes out. He doesn't see that a tiny thrush is listening in the background. Bilbo returns to the dragon's den later, assuming it to be asleep. This is all a ruse by the dragon. Smaug is able to detect Bilbo's scent, but he is unable to see him. The two begin to talk. Using riddles and flattery, Bilbo is able to convince Smaug to expose his weak spot, which is a little area of skin without armor on his left breast. To inform Thorin what he's discovered, Bilbo rushes out. He doesn't see that a tiny thrush is listening in the background. The dwarves and Bilbo are trapped in the mountain by an avalanche when Smaug knows that Bilbo has escaped. Smaug chases Bilbo down the passageway. Smaug assumes that the men of Lake Town are somehow implicated based on Bilbo's riddles and so flies down to exact retribution. Meanwhile, the dwarves and hobbits have made their way into the treasure room after noticing the dragon has vanished. It's there that they all celebrate the wealth, and Bilbo goes shopping for a few souvenirs. While Thorin is interested in the Arkenstone, Bilbo maintains the Mithril coat of mail as his own. Because it's a rare and light metal, it's extremely powerful. Following the river down to an old guard post cavern, the group eats, rests, and plans their next move. Smaug still hasn't been dealt with. Having left Bilbo and the dwarves behind, we follow Smaug as he heads towards Lake Town. In the midst of his assault on the town, the men are fending him off. Preparing for battle, they tuck their arrows in and draw their bows. It's just before Bard is ready to shoot his arrow when an unidentified thrush lands on his shoulder, speaks into his ear, and informs the young archer exactly where he should aim. When the arrow hits the dragon's soft area, he lets it fly right into the dragon's heart, killing him instantly. As Smaug comes on the village, damaging it even more, several residents are saved by jumping into the lake, including Bard. It breaks their hearts to see their town decimated but they're glad that they can go to the mountain now and get their hands on some of the gold to help them rebuild. As word spreads throughout Middle-earth of Smaug's death, the Elf King rushes to Lake Town to lend a hand. It's time for both humans and elves to get their hands on the prize. Thrushes descend on Bilbo's shoulder and attempt to communicate with him. The thrush sends a raven to translate for Bilbo because the dwarf doesn't understand. Smaug is dead, according to the bird. Additionally, the raven warns them that a large number of elves and humans are en route. The dwarves await the town's residents when they arrive. Bard recounts the harrowing experiences of the human race's most desperate moments. It doesn't matter to Thorin. 
because the treasure belongs to his ancestors before him, he should be the one to keep it. The castle was besieged by both humans and elves. No one is allowed to enter or leave. Bilbo is not happy about this development. No one disputes Thorin's decisions, even if he would have been happy to share the loot. The Arkenstone is still missing, so Bilbo comes up with a plan to bring an end to the war. It is time for him to get into the camp of both humans and elves and put on his invisibility ring. Bilbo is brought before Bard and the Elven King after revealing his true identity. Thorin will get them from Arkenstone if he gives them to Arkenstone. It astounds the two that a little hobbit would risk angering the dwarves in order to stop a war in its tracks. Returning to the mountain, Bilbo rejects the camp's offer of safety. Gandalf, who he encounters on the way, commends him for his courage. Awaiting Gandalf's arrival is this matter's conclusion. Having gained some confidence, Bilbo returns to the mountainside. At dawn the next day, two messengers arrive on the mountain, hoping to persuade Thorin to see reason. Bard shows him the Arkenstone and offers to swap it if he still refuses. Thorin is enraged when he discovers that Bilbo had a hand in this. After Gandalf tells Thorin that he is the second messenger, Bilbo's explanation is interrupted by Gandalf's declaration. The Arkenstone was part of Bilbo's share, which he had committed to on his contract, so he might dispose of it as he pleased. In order to get the stone, Thorin has no choice but to hand over a fourteenth of the treasure. He secretly hopes that his dwarf kin, who are on their way, would grab the stone by force before he has to give it up. While the dwarf army comes, a new enemy is on the prowl. This wealth will not be safe for long. According to Gandalf, the goblins and wargs are on their way. To defeat the approaching danger, the dwarves must band together with the elves and humans. The Battle of the Five Armies is the name given to this battle. Initially the conflict is going in favor of the good guys, but just when the goblins appear to be winning, the wargs launch a furious counterattack and take the upper hand. Even though Bilbo is not directly participating in the combat, he is forced to flee inside the elves' camp and is nearly besieged by their troops. When Bilbo spots the eagles, the outcome looks bleak for the good people. Bilbo is knocked unconscious by a rock as the good guys appear to have a chance. Upon waking up, Bilbo finds himself on the mountainside. Because he is invisible, the man who is looking for him will never find him. The man pulls Bilbo to safety after he removes his ring and asks for help. At this point, Bilbo is reunited with Gandalf, who is happy to find the hobbit in good health. The good guys prevailed, but with a price. Thorin is deteriorating rapidly and will soon be dead. He wants to meet with Bilbo in order to apologize for his actions. Bilbo is informed of the battle's conclusion by Gandalf. The entrance of Bairn, disguised as a bear, was the real turning moment in the war. Whether they are dead or hiding, the goblins fled. It is then announced that Bard has been promoted to Lake Town's new master and that peace has been restored between humans and dwarves. Gandalf and Bairn give Bilbo a large sum of gold so that he can return home the long way. In the Mirkwood, Bilbo refuses to travel through. In Bairn's house, they have a wonderful winter. Finally, Gandalf and Bilbo make it to Rivendell in the spring so that Gandalf and Elrond may talk about their adventures. Gandalf left the group because he had to fight with the wizards to expel a necromancer from the forest, which Bilbo learns from the wizards. Once Bilbo has rested and recovered, he and Gandalf return to the Shire by the long and winding route. When Bilbo returns to his home, he discovers that his goods have been auctioned off because he was considered dead. He immediately halts the sale and reclaims most of his belongings, but he is never welcomed by the other hobbits again. Hobbits who tell tales of dragons and gold scare the wits out of the elves and dwarves. Neither adventurers nor adventurers appeal to them. Bilbo, on the other hand, is content with his new role. There are lots of guests from dwarves, elves, and a wizard, and he doesn't particularly like the company of decent hobbits. While he works on his memoir, There and Back Again, A Hobbit's Holiday, Bilbo is content with his kettle, pipe, and comfortable surroundings. Bilbo Baggins, Hobbit Bilbo is Bilbo's type. The Baggins Hobbit's wealthiest member. As a took. Bilbo's mother is an explorer, but he's more like his father, a hobbit who prefers to stay at home. Smaller than dwarfs, hobbits are around half the size of humans. They don't have beards, they're overweight, and they're dressed in neon colors, but that's about it. As a result of their leathery and warmly furred foot soles, hobbits do not wear shoes. People with curly hair, brown fingers and bright smiles are known for their fruity chuckles. They have the ability to be stealthy and undetected. At the very least, Bilbo thinks they'd make excellent robbers. Despite his reluctance, he joins in the fun and evolves as a character. Instead, 
he discovers a newfound sense of self-confidence, along with an uncanny capacity for problem-solving brilliance. At the beginning of the novel, he's a shy burglar who gradually grows bolder. Bilbo is a fearless and resourceful character. Gandalf the clever and cunning wizard. He keeps a low profile. Despite his assistance to the dwarves in their quest to retake Lonely Mountain and its treasure, his true intentions remain a mystery. He convinces Bilbo to join the dwarves as a thief in order to fulfill a prophecy. Gandalf possesses powerful magical skills, but he prefers to conceal them. Routinely disguises himself by donning robes and shifting his voice. Gandalf, a nomad, would stop by the Hobbit Hamlet to tell the children there about his travels and the experiences he'd had. Climbing trees, sailing ships to far off shores, etc. Bilbo may not have been adventurous, but he did enjoy watching Gandalf's firework displays. Thor and Oakenshield and the dwarves, dwarves are short and sturdy. They are obstinate, greedy, and deceptive. Those who work in the mines are extracting precious metals from the ground. As a result of this, Thorin and the rest of his merry band of adventurers, Feely, Keely, Dwalin and Balin, are on the prowl. Thur, Thorin's grandfather, was the ruler of the underworld. Smaug, the fire-breathing dragon, attacked and claimed all of the king's gold when he had his kingdom at Lonely Mountain. Thorin intends to reclaim his lost heirlooms. He becomes increasingly reliant on Bilbo as the plot unfolds. In the end, Bilbo is forced to rescue him from dangerous situations because he can't come up with a plan on his own. Gollum, a little, slimy monster. In the tunnels beneath the misty mountains, he dwells on a rock in the middle of an underground lake. He is a spooky character that survives on fish from the lake and occasional goblin encounters. His eyes, hands, and feet are all large. This man's speech is punctuated with high-pitched hisses. Chatting to my precious, his gold band, it appears like he is speaking to himself. Gollum is upset when he loses the ring and Bilbo discovers it. Readers may understand why the ring is so sought after after learning that it is magical and can make the wearer invisible. However, the ring's exact composition will be revealed in subsequent books. In 1892, Professor John Ronald Ruel Tolkien of Oxford was born in South Africa and died in 1973 in Britain. A world-class linguist and fantasy novelist in one. In addition to The Hobbit, he wrote many other tales. When a publisher learned that he had written the book for his own children, it became an instant hit with readers of all ages. Soon after, he received a commission to complete the Lord of the Rings story. Middle-earth is located in Arda, a world invented by Tolkien for his novels. Elven Latin is the name of the language he created specifically for them. Until the age of 12, Tolkien was educated at home. After his mother died, he was placed in the care of Father Francis Xavier Morgan, a Catholic priest. It wasn't until the age of 16 that he started having relationship problems. When Father Francis realized that love was interfering with Tolkien's studies, he forbade him from contacting her until he was 21. Tolkien contacted Edith Mary Brad on the night of his 21st birthday. She was three years his senior and, as one might expect, engaged to another man. She decided to marry Tolkien as soon as she understood that he still had feelings for her. They wed in 1916 and lived happily together until her death in 1971. Three years later, they were wedded. Twenty-two months later, he joined her in the afterlife. It was clear that they were devoted to each other, as well as to their family. He and she were buried in the same cemetery in Oxford's Wolvercote Cemetery under the names Luthien and Bahrain, respectively in honor of two fictional characters from Tolkien's short tale collection The Silmarillion. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video. Mm -hmm.